Lights out for SpaceX Starlink. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the lap song. So good, guys. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technical day. I would say tech and photo and video. Let's combine them all. We're going to talk a little bit about SpaceX Starlink satellites and how they have changed recently that is going to help astronomers. Basically lights out in the sky. You won't be able to see the satellites as much as you did in the past. And they've done a bunch of studies on the new materials and what they're doing. And I think it's really fantastic that SpaceX is putting forth all of the effort to help let's say astronomers here on the ground be able to see the night sky without seeing these lines and streaks in every single one of their frames that they capture long let's say exposures so i think it's really interesting and i want to read this to you and then give you my thoughts and then i want to know your thoughts about this so stay until the end and then down below comment that's what this channel is all about us not just me sitting here as this talking head. Before I get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, please do so. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also consider joining my newsletter. There's over 10,000 people already on that newsletter. So become a member of that. It is free. You could just go over to jcristina.com forward slash join, and then you will start getting my weekly newsletter with all kinds of new things, tips, tricks. There's going to be a lot of deals. I'm gonna start putting in there a lot of cool things. If you enjoy this video, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, click this little button over here, the notification button. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And there will be a live tonight. So join me right around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a thank you button down here that you can click. But even if you don't, consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be awesome. I would love to have you. Finally, if you're looking for a VPN, consider Speedify. I've been using them for about two months now. Absolutely fantastic. VPN, faster speeds, better reliability, affordable. Check them out. They gave us a promo code, which is Jake Christina. You'll get 20% off if you sign up with them. Also, if you just want to click on a link, I'll put a link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment. You can click on that. The link is jcristina.com forward slash speed. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash speed. Give them a shot. Anyways, let's get into this article. A new piece of research from a distinguished group of engineers and astronomers have indicated that Starlink's latest version 2 Mini, or the BUS F9-2, ultra-fast broadband satellites which sit in LEO, or low Earth orbit, launched earlier this year, are over 10 times fainter than SpaceX's Generation 1 satellites. That is amazing, 10 times fainter. Just to recap, one of the biggest complaints about the mega constellations of communication satellites at such a low altitude is that they tend to be very bright, which can cause a significant disruption to observational sciences like astronomy, i.e. LEOs or low Earth orbiting satellites showing up as multiple streaks in telescope images. When you do these long exposures and you see all of these lines, most of those lines, they're not shooting stars, those lines or satellites going across the screen. This can make it much harder to picture the night sky and to do things like spot dangerous asteroids or detect key events. And that was one of the major things that they were saying, scientists were saying, that listen, if there is just a plethora of satellites up there and there's dots everywhere and streaks everywhere, it would be very easy for us to miss something that is moving, some type of asteroid or some type of anomaly in space we're going to miss if we can't see it and it's behind a streak. And the thing is, is to remove those streaks, yeah, you can paint them out and remove them by adding pixels right beside those pixels, let's say, to clone them out or whatever. The problem is, is what's behind it? You can't see it. So this is problematic, and this is what the scientists were saying, and SpaceX has addressed it. The article continues, naturally, 
The Starlink network has taken the most flack for this because they are by far and away the biggest constellation. Starlink has around 4,260 LEO satellites in orbit around the Earth with an altitude of around 500 kilometers. They're sitting right around 550, let's call it. And they have approval to add roughly 7,500 more by the end of 2027. In response, SpaceX has been working towards a goal to try to make their future satellites virtually invisible to the naked eye. The biggest step on this journey appears to have been taken by the new version 2 mini satellites, which feature an improved reflective layer that reflects more sunlight away from observers on the ground. SpaceX also adjusts the attitude of the solar array to minimize brightness. This is very, very important. Now, I don't know if all of you know what that means by manipulating or changing the attitude of those solar arrays. Basically, if we look at this phone, right now it is pretty matte black, but if I move it towards the light, so we can see the light is coming in in this direction and then reflecting directly into the lens. Let's stay to us on the ground. Well, if you just turn or change the attitude of this array like this or maybe this way, you can see how it becomes more and more dim. And that is exactly what SpaceX is doing. They're trying to get the solar arrays to look kind of like this, where it almost disappears in the night sky and you can't see it. In comparison to being like this, where it's extremely bright and now you can see every single one going by. So not only are they putting the matte finish on the satellites, but they are adjusting those solar arrays so that the attitude of them does not reflect down to the ground that they're actually over. And this is very important. So as the satellites are moving in orbit, they're also changing their positioning just slightly, ever so slightly, so that that reflection doesn't happen. This is fantastic. And as you can see, there's a lot of engineering, a lot of thought that goes into this. I'll get into a little bit more in a minute about collision and avoidance and this kind of thing. But anyways, this article continues by saying, at this point, we have to remember that the new satellites are much bigger than the old ones, the first generations. Although not as big as the final version two satellites are expected to be, more than twice the weight at 2000 kilograms. But a new study highlights a few caveats. For example, when the version two minis are first launched, they are actually brighter than the generation ones, at least until they reach their desired orbit and had been correctly positioned. I.e., you can still expect to see long lines of new Starlink satellites immediately after launch, and they will be even brighter. Certain maneuvers such as orbit keeping and collision avoidance will often also change the orientation of the satellites and thus making them brighter again. So what this translates into is the version two minis will be brighter because they are larger, three to four times larger. So when they're going up and they're in that parade, in that path or that pattern, yes, they're going to be brighter because they're larger. But once they get to that altitude and now resituate themselves and now reposition their solar arrays and whatnot, now all of a sudden they become fainter than the original generation ones. Number one, they have the matte paint over the entire satellite. Number two, most importantly, is they are changing the attitude of those solar arrays. And that is a big, big deal. The article continues, nevertheless, the study suggests good progress. Indeed, on the number of occasions, the team even struggled to see the new satellites with their observational equipment, suggesting that their brightness is less than even the dimmest star. That is amazing compared to the way they were. Once again, 10 times more faint, the version two mini satellites, and three to four times larger. That is fantastic. The real test will be whether SpaceX can continue to make improvements and how much of an impact we will see when the largest version two satellites begin to launch in the future. That will be on the Starship. Once that thing doesn't explode, they'll be able to put hundreds, hundreds of these large version two satellites into orbit. 
Fingers crossed it happens before the end of the year. We will see. At the same time, we should not forget that observation science is only one area of concern, with radio astronomers also having complaints. Not to mention the wider concern over the increase in space junk around the Earth and the risk from catastrophic collisions. Now, the whole idea of catastrophic collisions as you add more and more objects into LEO or low Earth orbit is definitely going to be increased. And that is why all of the satellites have some type of collision prevention on them so that they can move out of the way if they see something is going to collide with them. Obviously, this takes energy to do, and the more of that that they have to do, the less amount of time they're going to be in orbit, right? They will run out of fuel. This is just how it goes. But I do believe that astronomers here on Earth are going to be a lot more happy with these satellites that are going to be 10 times fainter than the old version ones. That being said, it's still going to be something in the sky that they're going to have to deal with. And remember, even if they don't capture it on their cell, on their scene, on their single frame, that long exposure, there will most likely still be a streak. But instead of being a white streak, maybe it's a gray streak. Maybe it is a black streak. Whatever it is, it's still going to be missing data because there is something in the way. There's no way around it. That's just the way it is. As far as radio astronomy, well, there's not much that you can do about that. The more noise that you have in LEO means that you're going to be hearing a lot more of that static, let's call it, here on Earth. In my opinion, over the next 30 or 40 years, let's say, the majority of our observation, both audio through radio signals as well as through light, actually capturing in a telescope like you would see on the web or the Hubble telescope or something like that, these are going to be units that will be in geo, that will be above floating higher than all of the LEO satellites that will be closer to the planet. So they will get a clear view of the night sky, so to speak. That's audio as well as visual. And I think this will be important, especially for detecting anomalies, meteors, asteroids, things that could potentially be avoided by us, but if we don't know that it's coming, it might be too late. So I think that this is going to be important. I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to see a lot more of these telescopes, larger telescopes like the Hubble and the Webb and whatnot in GEO. That's my personal opinion. But when this piece also talks about, you know, space junk and it almost kind of gives that feeling of, you know, are we not doing or are we doing enough to remain green, right? When we read stuff like space junk or trash or pollution and whatnot, it just makes me think about how people are just kind of off when they talk about this. And I hear it all the time and people talk about the green movement and pollution and how much pollution that we're producing here in the U.S. and whatnot. And I was just doing some research on it because I just I want to know for myself. I'm one of those people that I just don't want to hear everyone's stuff. And if I do hear everyone's stuff, that's fine. But then I will kind of boil it down and make my own decision, right? And I was looking this up just to see. And what they did was, and for 2023, they had a list of countries and how much pollution they're putting out. And the pollution was analyzed by, I think it's milligrams per cubic meter or something. Anyways, the bottom line here is countries like China, for example, India, they're like in the number one category. They produce a ton of pollution, all right? So out of like 195 countries, let's say, we have China in the top 10. I think they're at like eight or something. India is like the number one offender when it comes to pollution, right? We're sitting at, guys, we're sitting at 145. We're literally right next to like Finland and France and Canada and Australia and Scotland, Denmark for pollution. People don't know this, right? They don't realize it. I mean, just for an example, using that metric, the milligrams per cubic meter, all right? We're producing seven, right? Think of this, seven. China is producing 39. India is producing 58. We're producing seven. They're producing 58 in India. 
That is eight times more pollution in India. In China, they're producing almost six times more pollution than we are. Six times. So when we hear about all this green and that we're not doing enough, I just kind of think it's a little bit disingenuous, literally disingenuous, because we are doing amazing. Now, should we continue? Absolutely. I mean, we want to set the bar for the world. The problem is, is the world doesn't follow the bar. We set it up here. Literally, we're at 150, let's say, out of the 200 or 195 countries. It's crazy. We're doing fabulous. And so is SpaceX here. But like we see with these environmentalists that are targeting Elon Musk over there in Texas and Boca Chica with the whole Starship situation and trying to get them to postpone it and postpone it and postpone it. It's just kind of disingenuous, like I say. It just doesn't make sense because the amount that this guy does for green, the green movement with batteries and battery cars and everything that he does now with light pollution, just right across the board, which is just crazy in my opinion. So my question to you is this, what do you think China will do when they start launching their 13,000 satellites that they're trying to get into low earth orbit? into Leo to directly compete with Elon Musk. What do you think they're going to do? Do you think that they're going to be environmentally friendly? Do you think that they're going to be light sensitive? Do you think that they're going to care if those satellites reflect on the Earth's surface? I could be wrong here. But I'm gonna to venture to say the answer to that is 100%, or well, let's say 99.99999% no. They just don't care. The same thing with India. Remember, India has 1.4 billion people. China has 1.4 billion people. The US has like 340 million people, all right? It's a lot less. But the amount of pollution that we are creating is literally in line with countries that have one-tenth of the number of people that we do. So I do think the US is doing a fantastic job. I think Elon Musk, SpaceX is doing a fantastic job. But if you read some of the articles that I have, they don't think so. I mean, just a few days ago, I was reading article upon article upon article blaming Elon Musk for the Starlink not working on the sub that went down, that ended up sadly imploding. I mean, this is a type of ludicrousy when we all know that there's absolutely no way that this could even happen, right? I mean, Starlink can't even work in the rain half the time. It's gonna work through the ocean, 12,000 feet under the water. I mean, it's ridiculous, but this is what we hear. This is the rhetoric. And that's why I like to look at things kind of in an open way and look at all of the different sides and then decide for myself. I mean, I honestly didn't know how much pollution the US was actually producing. And now when I look at the actual amount that the US produces in comparison to the rest of the world, it is not what I thought. Why is that? Because I listen to, just like you, to the news and everywhere else, and it's saying that we're just, we're horrible and we're destroying the planet. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this content. I would love to hear your thoughts about all of this. If you're an astronomer, if you do a lot of astrophotography, are you excited about this? 10 times fainter than the old version of satellites. Are you excited about it? What do you think about the whole pollution thing? What do you think about the space junk that's being created? What do you think about the satellites, the new satellites that are going up? What do you think about China's 13,000 satellites that they're going to be launching? What do you think? Down below, let's have the conversation, all right? Anyways, if you enjoyed this, throw the thumbs up, do all of those things, that'd be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.